Thank you for coming to the Southbridge School Committee meeting on Tuesday, July 24th, 2012 at 7 p.m. Let's stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. Thank you, agenda item number two. Is there any public input this evening? Anybody from the public who'd like to come up and speak? Anybody from the public? Okay, no one from the public. We'll move on to call the meeting to order, please. Roll call. Dr. Domenko? Present. Mrs. Donovan? Present. Mr. Lazo? Present. Mrs. McLaughlin? Present. Dr. O'Leary? Present. Mrs. Principe? Present. Mrs. Woodruff? Present. Seven present. Thank you. Uh, item number five, agenda number five is consent items. A, warrant number 47 in the amount of $179,004.40. Do we have a motion? So moved. Thank second. you. And a second, we have a motion and a second. Um, roll call, please. Dr. Or actually, do we have any, sorry, do we have any discussion or Mr. Wiggins, no would you like to? No, consent, no, con no discussion on consent agenda. Okay. There's no discussion, but Mr. Wiggins, would you like to explain? Uh, these are warrants that the, um, actually in these particular cases, these are warrants that a majority of the committee has signed. Okay. Thank you. So roll call then. Dr. O'Leary? Yes. Mrs. Principe? Yes. Mrs. Woodruff? Yes. Dr. Domenko? Yes. Mrs. Donovan? Yes. Mr. Lazo? Yes. Mrs. McLaughlin? Yes. Seven yes. Thank you, passes. And for number B, or letter B, warrant number 48 in the amount of $5,252.07. So moved. Motion. Second. And a second. Roll call. Mrs. Principe? Yes. Mrs. Woodruff? Yes. Dr. Domenko? Yes. Mrs. Donovan? Yes. Mr. Lazo? Yes. Mrs. McLaughlin? Yes. Dr. O'Leary? Yes. Seven, yes. Thank you, motion passes. Agenda number six, approval of minutes, regular school committee meeting, June 25th, 2012. Do I have a motion? So moved. Motion. Do I have a second? Second. Thank you. We have a second. Are there any changes or amendments or any, any updates on the meeting for June 25th, 2012? If there are none, can we have a roll call, please? Mrs. Woodruff? Yes. Dr. Domenko? Abstained. Mrs. Donovan? Abstained. Mr. Lazo? Yes. Mrs. McLaughlin? Abstained. Dr. O'Leary? Abstained. Mrs. Principe? Abstained. Three yes, four abstained. So the, move, the minutes are not approved. For item number B, regular school committee meeting for July 3rd, 2012. Do I have a motion? I make a motion. Thank you. And a second? Second. And a second. Any corrections or errors to the committee meetings on July 3rd, 2012? All right. Roll call, please. Dr. Domenko? Yes. Mrs. Donovan? Yes. Mr. Lazo? Abstain. Mrs. McLaughlin? Yes. Dr. O'Leary? Abstain. Mrs. Principe? Yes. Mrs. Woodruff? Yes. Four yes, three abstain. Thank you. Minutes pass. Item C, the reorganization meeting for July 3rd, 2012. Do we have any a motion for that? So moved. A motion, second? Second. Thank you. Any corrections, errors? Okay, if we see none, we'll have a roll call vote, please. Mrs. Donovan? Yes. Mr. Lazo? Abstain. Mrs. McLaughlin? Yes. Dr. O'Leary? Abstain. Mrs. Principe? Yes. Mrs. Woodruff? Yes. Dr. Domenko? Yes. Five yes, two abstain. Thank you. Minutes are accepted. Agenda item number seven, reports. Are there any reports this evening? There are no reports. Thank you. Item agenda number eight, presentations. A, West Street School oil spill update. Mr. Como? Uh, Mr. Como is here this evening to give a presentation for having come to the podium. You'll bring up to date on where we are with the oil spill. Thank you. Good evening. <clears throat> um, 
On July the 7th, or Saturday, I get a call at uh, 1030 in the morning from the fire department that they um, were in the building at West Street and there was oil on the boiler room floor. Um, their quick response uh, saved us a great deal of uh, time and expense uh, locating that problem as quickly as they did. Uh, we, we assume we lost um, about 300 to 310 gallons of oil. The, um, they notified the DEP right away um, after they called me. I called a uh, cleanup company and then I called our insurance company to make sure we were covered. And they in turn called a uh, company called uh, Cushing Jamalo and Wheeler, who are their environmental consultants. They oversee the whole project, make sure everybody's doing what they're supposed to be doing, putting the correct time and, and so forth. So they've been on site uh, since day one. Um, the, um, I also called the tech repair to um, repair the service. Within two hours of, of calling, um, from the call I got, everybody was on site and working on uh, solving the problem and cleaning it up. They had to go down into the um, uh, catch basins and check those out. I called the D, uh, DPW to come in and open up those basins for me so that uh, people could look at them. Um, I was out of town when this happened, so I had called in one of my maintenance personnel to come in and oversee the project for the day. Um, and Monday, after everything, they cleaned up the bulk of it on that Saturday. They came back on Monday, this uh, Cushing Jamal and Wheeler, and um, started some uh, test boring in through the concrete floor of the boiler room and some test boring outside to determine how much oil was lost out into the um, groundwater or out into the, the ground itself. Uh, they did determine that there was um, oil in the groundwater and um, they were going to need to uh, excavate the flooring uh, of the boiler room. So where we stand right now is they have, if you go by West Street, you'll see a, a thousand gallon tank out there. They're pumping groundwater out and filtering it, um, and filtering the oil out of it and disposing of it right now. They're waiting on the DEP to give them permission to excavate um, around 200 yards of uh, soil and be able to excavate it and deposit it somewhere else and have it transported. So as soon as they get that call, uh, we've already had an electrician go in and reroute the electrical wires that go underneath the boiler room floor, so those are out of the way. And I'm assuming by the end of this week or, or early next week, they'll be in there cutting the concrete and starting to um, excavate that soil and then get everything back together. And I've given them a deadline of September 1st that the bulk and all the construction work is out of there. I'm sure we'll have monitoring wells there for um, you know, months to follow, but um, there should be uh, no reason why school can't open. Um, right now, there's no odor in the building, um, not even in the boiler room. So it's, it's pretty well contained. Uh, they have fans in there blowing the air out as well as, um, you know, as the water being pumped out. So we're in, uh, we're in pretty good shape. We, it could have been a lot worse um, the way our system is set up. We had 6,000 gallons in there. Um, if it wasn't detected right away, we could have had a real mess in there. So we got very lucky. Um, I commend the fire department uh, how quickly they, they responded and um, were able to figure out exactly where it was coming from and get on site and shut it down as fast as they did. So that's where we stand. Anybody has any questions? Or? Thank you for coming this evening. Sure. So My first question is, what actually happened? We have... Um, but what was the cause of the spill? The, um, the boiler room is set up, it's, uh, it has a pump system. It pumps the oil out of the tank through lines, goes by all the boilers, and then it goes back into the tank again. It, there's a series of pressure gauges along the way so they can determine what the pressure is. Uh, one of those gauges, there's uh, like a bellow or something inside it, and it ruptured and it started leaking out from the base of that, that gauge. Um, it happens not that often, but it, it does happen. Are and those gauges um, maintenance on a regular basis? Actually, they were about a month and a half ago, they were all replaced except for one, mm -hmm. that one. The company came in and they said they're going to replace all the defective gauges. And I'm assuming at that time, that gauge was not defective. Um, it was operating, uh, so they didn't replace it but all the other ones were replaced um, except for that one. But it's not something that you routinely just go around and take the gauges out and, and replace them with new ones. Uh, I've seen gauges, we have some at the high school that have been there since you know, the 60s, uh, still functioning properly. And, so, and just a follow-up question, I was just, how does the fire department know that that issue took place? Like what triggered them to know that there was an issue at West Street School? They detected um, um, oil or, or substance down at the uh, sewer treatment plant. And so they, uh, treatment plant called the fire department to see where they could locate it. At the same time, there was a house on West Street that called and said they could smell 
gas in their, in, their, um, in their house. So when they came there, they said, no, that's not gas, that's oil. And they just quickly thought, okay, who's got the biggest tank of oil on this street? And they went right to the school, right into the boiler room and, and shut it off. So they, they acted uh, very quickly and they were just, it was, it's nice to know that they know the, the town, know where the buildings are, what's in these buildings, uh, to react that quickly. So. Okay, thank you very much. All right. Anybody else, any questions for Mr. Como? Okay, if there's no more questions. Oh, yes, Mr. Lazo. Mike, what company uh, monitors those uh, meters? The, the, the company that monitors and checks the meters? Well, we have the, uh, the company, gauges. MPC, MPC, who is contracted through the town to uh, uh, service our, our boilers. Okay. Boiler rooms. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Como. Right. All righty, number B, or letter B, school handbook, South Bridge Middle High School. Uh, Mr. Leach is here this evening to present the uh, changes to the, actually, the new middle high school student handbook. Good evening. Before I begin tonight, I'd like to welcome the two newest members to the school committee and to tell you that I look forward to working with you both and the committee as a whole uh, for the benefit of our children. Um, I was asked to step in and pinch hit to uh, present the middle high handbook uh, as uh, both principals were not able to be with us tonight. There are uh, some 15 changes uh, that took place in the consolidation of the two handbooks into one. Um, I want to pick out some of the more significant of those to speak about tonight and then if you have questions about those or any others, I, I'll be happy to try and answer them or redirect to someone who might have more expertise. As far as the uh, significant changes that I mentioned, <clears throat> pardon me, a new mission vision statement was created that is more aligned to current district initiatives as well as the school improvement plan. The attendance policy was revised to reflect mutually agreed upon conditions as well as applicable state laws. The marking system, the weight of a full year course was slightly altered to reflect each quarter counting for 22% over the previous 20% and final exams counting for 12, which was previously 10 for a total of 100%. Uh, our students will be Happy to know that there have been some changes in the dress code. We've actually been uh, in discussion about this for uh, the past school year. And, uh, as, and the students knew at the end of last school year that moving into the new building, uh, that the hoodie policy was going to be rescinded and uh, hoodies would be able to be worn during the school day. But obviously, uh, we don't want them the hood worn overhead and hats and things of that uh, nature. Any uh, hooded garments are, uh, are uh, not to be worn overhead. Uh, along with that, uh, we changed the policy regarding uh, backpacks and book bags. Those will be allowed to be used during the school day as well. And uh, finally, the list of inappropriate behaviors uh, and ID consequences re was removed in lieu of a basic code of conduct with consequences given progressively and at the discretion of administration and by law. Uh, in, in the past, uh, this policy was sometimes referred to as the bump policy, and we feel that um, it's a more effective tool dealing with the students uh, grades 6 through 12 at this time. So I think any questions about any of that or anything else? Thank you, else? Mr. Leach. Is there any questions? I have a question, point of information, uh, I guess. Mrs. McLaughlin. I'm just, sorry. That's okay. Just remind the new people. Um, is it appropriate to uh, discuss the handbook and its content right now or upon a motion to vote it in? You can, you can ask your questions yes, now to Mr. Leach. If you want to clarify anything with Mr. Leach, you can ask those questions now. Um, Uh, okay, I'll ask a couple questions and then I do have some comments general to all the handbooks, but um, one of the things I want to ask is, is this school a peace builder school? 
I ask that only because all of the three other handbooks in the district have included information about the Peace Builders Program, and there's nothing in this handbook that alludes to that. I, I think the short answer is uh, no, but in spirit, I think that uh, it is because I, I, I do agree with the concept of it, but in name, uh, we've, we, we haven't labeled it that way, but the, the uh, uh, what Peace Builders advocates, we will advocate as well. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to hold uh, off until. All right. Is there anyone else who would like to ask questions? Mrs. Donovan? Thank you. Um, thank you, Mr. Leach, for, for coming this evening. Um, my first question was maybe just a general observation. Um, the very front cover of the handbook says student handbook. Our other handbooks say student, parent, or guardian, and I didn't know, should a parent or a guardian name be on the handbook, or is this directly for students only? The, as you see it now, this draft would be the student handbook, but there's also a provision for a teacher handbook. We, we have not printed a parent handbook, uh, okay. along this line, but it's, it's something we could take under advisement, yes. Okay. Um, like Mrs. McLaughlin, I have many questions, so while you're here, I'll, I'll just keep going. Um, there was no mention about a school council in this handbook, and I didn't know if that was something that this, uh, that, the, that the new school was going to want to continue to pursue for the we, upcoming school we year. We have, for years now, we've had a school council, and I'm sure that won't change. If it was omitted, uh, then I would say that that was probably an error that needs to be rectified. Okay. Um, the address, I couldn't find the address it's in 132 here. 132 Tory Road. 132 Neither Torrey. can a lot of the delivery people that come to the old high school, by the way. <laughs> it wasn't so. mentioned anywhere. The address right. is 132 Tory Road. Okay. Thank you. Um, just a point of information, page two um, had a mention of the school committee members for this school year and it reflected uh, the old committee uh, or you know the prior committee from the school year of 2011 to 2012. I know that other handbooks had been updated and I wasn't sure what the protocol was of what current school committee name should be in this existing handbook. Obviously before it goes to print this this is so what you see draft? Is, a, is a draft. Okay. Before it goes to print We've purposely waited until after the elections to re reflect okay. the accurate committee. Okay, that's that's perfectly fair. Um, another question, if you could just, do you have it with you? The I do. Handbook in front of you. Um, page three. Mm -hmm. um, the second part of it, the SMHS philosophy. The second item, the bullet item there. Parents and other family members play a pivotal role in both the academic and emotional development of middle school students, and then it continues on. I didn't know if we should specifically list only middle school students or perhaps include high school students as well. I don't know why we're specifying or relating that statement strictly for the middle school students. I don't know if it's a big deal or not, no, but. It should all be middle high school. Yeah, I think I, that I, would I be my recommendation right. I, that we I think throw it's that a, in there. Yes, it should be, yes. Okay. Um, uh, maybe perhaps a type. Are you in charge of typos? If I point out a typo. Well, if you've ever seen me type, <laughs> clearly I'm an expert on it, but I'm not in charge of it. Okay. Who should I submit the typo uh, questions to? <laughs> I would say submit it to my secretary. Okay, that's um, fine. Um, just a general question. On page 50, we talk about phys ed um, that will only be for a requirement for grades six through ten, and that's just a question in general that I had. Um, is that? Once you're a junior or a senior at the high school, do you no longer need to take phys ed as a requirement? Uh, by course? law, no. Okay. But we have had, um, in the past, we've had uh, an elective program for upperclassmen, and uh, okay. it has been popular. And I'm assuming that that will continue to be offered on an elective basis. Okay. How about um, a staff list? Our other uh, handbooks have a list of staff members who will be in that building for the upcoming school year, and I couldn't find, other than the, the main office staff and guidance staff, I didn't know if there would be a 
more involved or the teacher staff personnel? It, it has, to my knowledge, it hasn't been in the handbook in the past. Okay. But I could see an advantage. With I it. just think it's a great resource for parents if you you just want to know who's in the building or who's teaching what, or you hear a name but you're not sure what they teach. No, I, I, think, I think it's, a point it's well important taken. to yes. uh, have yeah, a staff I mean, list in there. Yeah, uh, a lot of times it's on a website, but uh, we could certainly work that into this draft. Yes. Okay. Um, and I guess my only other final question would be um, on page 15. Um, again, of this particular handbook. Under, for the open houses and the parent conferences, the abbreviations are still SHS and WMS for Wells Middle School and Southbridge High School. I just didn't know if those should be changed as well to reflect the they, yes, SMHS they should, or whatever should, yes. the new thing yep. is going to be. Okay. Okay, that's all. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mrs. Principe. Good evening, Mr. Leach. Will this be translated into Spanish? Yes. Okay. Yes, it will. And um, you mentioned the bump policy being taken out of the handbook, which I am very much in favor of it because was, it was uh, very confusing. It, it was very broad anyway. It, um, it, wa it wasn't specific. It, it, there was a whole range of consequences with it. And what we're doing is a more, I think, uh, a more appropriate way of dealing with student discipline. And I also see I did I did check it against our own policies and they seem to align in our you know our big district policies yeah. so they do seem to align with those. This this um, this handbook was was actually uh, formulated a little bit different because uh, the the two uh, building principals really worked on this and uh, and I, I did not have an active role in it. And I, had, I did have some concerns in presenting it. Uh, if, if any of my answers were awkward, I apologize. I, uh, I, uh, I want to thank Mr. Bishop and uh, Mrs. Allen for uh, giving me uh, you know, copious uh, notes and, uh, and preparing me as best they could. Um, I'm, I'm familiar with the handbook, but the consolidation uh, less familiar with, with the middle school handbook, obviously. Thank you. Thank you. Is there any more questions for Mr. Leach? If none, thank you, Mr. Leach, thank you. very much. C, school handbook, West Street School. If I may suggest, uh, the West Street School and Charlton Street School handbooks are identical. Uh, Mr. Montigny actually has worked on both of them uh, and, and actually we just adopted what his what his was for the both buildings so they could be consistent. Thank you. Uh, good evening committee members, new members, Mr. Reilly. The Parent Student Handbook for Child Street and West Street Schools have been revised for the 2012-2013 school year to include identical information for students in grades 1 through 5. The handbooks have been updated with input from school leadership team, staff members, and school council members. During the past few years, especially in 2010, the elementary handbooks went through major revisions. Both handbooks have been completely translated in Spanish by the homeschool liaisons. Revisions include the addition of individual school building pictures on each handbook cover rather than Peace Build the Kids. So we're in line together. The school calendar is included with updated open house information dates, parent conferences, MCAS testing schedules, including something different for this upcoming school year, achievement network interim, English language arts and math assessments in grades two through five. Changes to the staff list will occur in addition to new committee members and new telephone numbers on page 7A. Also, arrival and dismissal information has been more informative and expanded emergency cards with the number of students we, we will have at each school. During the first week of school, handbooks will be sent home with all students with signed student uh, parent student return acknowledgments, including emergency cards, internet acceptable use policies, and image release forms. Our handbooks contain useful information for parents on frequently asked questions, progress reports, marking terms, identified attendance, 
busing, medical information, school committee policies, and students' code of conduct. I took out the bump policy at West Street School to be in line with Charles Street. Both handbooks reference our nationally validated Peace Builder program. I wanted to, on a positive note here also, that on August 31st, the PTA is sponsoring an open house at Charlton Street School from 10 to 11.30 a.m. and West Street from 1 to 2.30. You're all cordially invited, public, parents, students. Thank you. Any questions? Thank you. Any, is there any questions? Mrs. Donovan? Yes, thank you. Good evening, Ms. Montigny. Nice evening. to see you again. Welcome. Thank you for coming. Um, one of the questions that I had, and you mentioned it, but I didn't know if you could explain it maybe a little bit more in depth, was what that achievement network means or what that is. I had never heard sure. of that before. And mm -hmm. I know that in here mm -hmm. it's specifically for grades two through five, but if you could just explain what that is, that would be appreciated. Achievement network is a, um, a quite a company they, from this area all the way down to uh, Louisiana, and they're very professional in providing interim assessments identified to the Massachusetts frameworks, the standards identified. So at the beginning of the school year, our teachers are working hard on curriculum mapping to identify areas that students need to know and standards to be tested at a certain time, being the first time. So uh, these standards will be ready. Students, uh, teachers will be testing towards those standards, which are on MCAS testing and Achievement Network will come in four or five times a year, I believe, to do interim assessments. I've developed, and West Street School has developed a administrative data leadership team, and we have a person assigned from Achievement Network out of Springfield, Mr. Ely, I believe. Yes. And they will come in and meet with me with my data leadership team and discuss the results that we can take back to our data teams to improve instruction in student performance and to identify strengths and weaknesses of students. And if I could add to sure. that, uh, Achievement Network is paid for through Race to the Top. Mm -hmm. uh, it is a priority partner identified by the DESE to work with districts in our situation as level four districts to improve achievement. Their focus is on professional development around the data inquiry model and uh, using a, a common assessment to assess the, the, the level of growth with all of our students in grades two through eight. They have helped us in grades K-12 already as, as part of a getting ready because the data inquiry model we're using in two through eight with them will be modeled also in K-1 and nine through 12 next year. Okay. I'm very impressed with their, yeah. their knowledge, and their database. They have many schools throughout the country all the way to Louisiana that they work on different areas to improve instruction. And they have assigned a coach to Charlton Street and West Street and I believe Wells Middle School, up to grade eight, from grades two to eight. Two through eight, yes. Yeah, that's fabulous. I'm very happy to hear that. Um, just so you know, I know because a lot of the, uh, the um, again, the handbook is mirrors one another between Charlton Street and West Street. I did find a couple other little typos and Spanish translations of days of the that's week okay. that aren't right, but we, I can submit Debbie. that to the uh, superintendent. That's you know, no problem. Debbie, you can um, one thing that jumped out at me, and perhaps Mr. Wiggin might be a better way to um, verify this, is on page 18A, we talked about the lunch program, and it appears that the old school lunch prices are still in there. And I don't recall, Mr. Wiggin, when the meeting was, or through you, um, oh. Madam Chair, to Mr. Wiggin, when the school lunch prices were, in fact, changed, or they all went up a quarter, or something like, I don't remember what it was, but I do know that the numbers that are in here don't appear to be correct, so I didn't know if at some point we could verify what the school lunch prices are for the upcoming school year and make those corrections in both handbooks. Sure, we'll check those. We may have to include some changes as far as what could be brought to school. I actually, yeah, we can check those before it goes to print. Okay. okay. Yep, that's all. Thank you very okay. much, Mr. Montigny. And Mrs. I McLaughlin? Think you. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I was also going to mention the school lunch mm -hmm. prices that have increased, but on page 34A, there's a typo on the very top of the page in both handbooks on the English translations. I think if you thumb to page 34, sure. uh, A, you'd see that. It's pretty obvious just to, uh, just to say that. And just so you know, I really like the frequently asked questions section and the student recognition page. It was a nice okay, way to, I think, you. end that handbook. So thank, thank you. you. Thank you for your input. Anyone else for questions for Mr. Montigny? 
Mrs. Domingo. Might have been an oversight from the previous school configuration, but it appears that Charlton Street uh, school staff list be is still listing grades two and three. Yes, and it's, that's going to get obviously because the other one is I don't already know if I put revised to be revised. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Thank you. Right, thank Anyone you. else? If no, thank you, Mr. Montigny, right, very much you. for coming. And Mrs. Shaw is here to talk about the handbook at East Road. Correct. Good evening. Diane Shaw, Principal East Road School. And our handbook has a few changes. Talk into this. I'm sorry. Our handbook has a few changes. The first of all was the, of course, the new school committee members. Welcome to Mrs. Donovan and Mrs. McLaughlin. And thank you all school committee members for serving our community and our schools. Our next um, change in our, in our handbook was the staff list. Our staff did reduce because our first graders have now gone to the West Street and Charlton Street schools and we will miss them terribly. Um, so that has changed some of our staff list. Uh, again, our corrections have been made for our school lunch price to be $2 for hot lunch and 50 cents for breakfast. So that was a change in our handbook along with um, the school goals to match the accelerated school improvement um, goals of our curriculum instruction to have highly quali high quality in curriculum instruction, our data analysis and data driven uh, culture that we are working so diligently up toward and our um, professional development for training for our teachers to make sure our students receive the best quality of teaching and instruction, along with our continued efforts and initiatives of having our parents, families, and um, community involved in our schools. And another change would have been our um, bullying policy, just adding more of the, um, just having the Southbridge school bullying policy and taking out some of the state um, amendments that were first previously before our district accepted it was in by the state from the governor. And what else? Our school-based support team has been changed to um, change from our instructional team um, that was in some schools the SATs and in our school ISTs. So our school-based support teams have also been changed. And the end of that, uh, the only other change was our updated school calendar. And I think that's it. Any questions? <laughs> Does anybody have questions? Ms. Dr. Domenico? Uh, thank you. Oh. How, how many students do you expect to have this coming September? Around 280. We, I've had the most students for the last two years, and now I'll have the least. <laughs> From 480 and, and now till two, to 200. And what, what do you expect the ratio of student teacher is going to be in the building after this reconfiguration? Well, right now it's about 21 to, uh, um, to two in kindergarten. That's the 21 upcoming. students to two, two adults, for the teach, kindergarten teacher and her paraprofessional and about 21 students. Some are a little lower. Our inclusions classes right now have 18. Our ELL uh, classrooms um, with their inclusive class as well have about 19 to 20. So it, 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 run, it ranges from 11 to 1, uh, 11 to 1 to 12 to 1 at the most uh, on the ratio. Thank you. Uh, just maybe a question to the superintendent. Um, just quickly going through the staff list, I see 55 staff people for 280 students. Is that comparable to other elementary school buildings? No, that's high. That's high. Uh, it's, uh, there's a significant amount of, a number of special ed students in there, and it's the early intervention ages that we're trying to, to get a lot of the help into the building. Uh, we did move a number of staff members with the first grade. Uh, this building had around 100 staff members last year. Yeah, 96, yes. Yeah. So it went, it went down about half. To about 60, yeah. And we have the PASS program, which have a lot of the children that are needs. It's a one-to-one one one program. One-to-one, so yeah. those children are needs um, are 
Thank you. You're welcome. Any other question? Mrs. Donovan? Yes, thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Shaw. Nice to see you. You too. Um, I guess uh, my first observation was similar to what I had for Mr. Leach. I didn't see an address okay. in here of a locating of where actually Eastford Road School is, so perhaps you could insert that. I will. Thank you. Um, the other thing that perhaps I just want to make sure that we'll go in there, I didn't see a district calendar for the school year as well as the open house schedule and the parent-teacher conference schedule. It might have been at the very, very last page. It said oh. insert here or something. Oh, you got. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought page you had the updated. One available. Yeah. I, I sent it after. I, I, you That's may have okay. gotten it. I'm sorry. Okay. I will give you. I, it will be in there as it is in this one. And I just want to make sure that this handbook will that also be translated into Spanish as the other ones? Is that? Yes, we have process? English and Spanish. Both are available to the community. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then probably just another note that I'll send along. I. For just a typo, I believe that on the staff list, um, the new phys ed teacher, I believe the last name looks um, grossly misspelled, so we'll just double check Cabrera? on that. Cabrera? Yes. All right, yes. let me just check. Yeah. Thank you. I'm all set, Mrs. Chair. Thank you. Is there anyone else with any questions for Mr. Sh Mrs. Shaw? Well, if there's no further questions, thank you very much, Mrs. Shaw. Thank you. All right, moving on to agenda number nine. Report of the superintendent, Mr. Ely. The uh, elementary organization obviously is coming uh, to a close by necessity. We're ready to, uh, to get, uh, we have kids assigned to classrooms. We have teachers assigned to classrooms. Uh, staffing is changing on a daily basis as people leave the district and we hire new people. Uh, but uh, the busing plan is uh, nearly completed. Uh, we have not gotten the final plan from the bus company, but they, they have all the information and we're in constant contact with them as of even today. Uh, so we will be putting out bus lists in the middle of the month as, uh, and, and obviously put them on the website and get them in the newspaper and, and get the cards out to the, uh, to the parents on the busing. So uh, the elementary reorganization is, is going well. Uh, I would say that we've uh, met the ambitious timeline and, and uh, obviously we have a lot of work to do to finish and uh, we have some issues, obviously, at, at uh, West Street we need to take care of with the boiler, boiler down the boiler room down there. But uh, uh, and we have a principal to hire, so uh, we uh, uh, we are on track to be ready to open without any problems. Next, the accelerated improvement plan update. The accelerated improvement plan uh, we submitted benchmarks at the end of June uh, for DESE to consider. Got some feedback from them. Uh, at the end of June, Michael Guinan, who was our plan manager, chose not to redo his contract uh, with the state, uh, the ESE, and uh, they have since uh, assigned us a new plan manager. His name is uh, Paul Livingston, uh, and he was with my team yesterday as we went through data, uh, an entire day of data here with the district. Uh, Mr. Livingston, Dr. Livingston uh, is a retired superintendent from a couple of districts around the state and uh, newly retired and now working for SchoolWorks, which is a company that contracts with DESE to do the plan management piece. Uh, so uh, he uh, uh, appears to have uh, a good handle on what we have to do. Uh, and what we have to do is by August 1st, we have to submit a revised plan for the upcoming year. In other words, a new plan has to be submitted, but we don't have to recreate an entire plan. We just have to move the benchmarks based on our results from this year, our preliminary results. So he's working on that as we speak. Uh, I, I actually spoke to him yesterday again. He was here and then uh, emailed him back and forth today some information. So he's working on putting that uh, plan in a form that the state will accept it. So that's due August 1st. All right, uh, Dr. Domingo, did you have a question? Yeah, I, I just had a question on the first item and I apologize for not being fast enough. Um, Knowing that the schools are opening four weeks from now, I would just like to know where the process is for the West Street School principal search. Yeah, and I have that next on the staffing updates. Okay. I'll, I'll, I'll bring up to date on that. Anyone else with questions? All right, we'll go on to staffing updates. Uh, I'll, I'll start with the West Street School principal position. Uh, we uh, interviewed a number of candidates. I think we interviewed eight candidates out of a pool of about 30. Uh, we interviewed those, we screened and interviewed at this level. Uh, 
uh, a couple weeks ago, and then last Thursday Tuesday. evening at West Street School, we hosted our staff at West Street School in the library and any parents who wanted to come, and they actually brought some kids with them, uh, in the cafeteria to meet the two candidates, ask questions of the two candidates, sort of, you know, give them an hour of, of uh, you know, who are you and what do you mean, you know, what, what do you want to do for our kids? Uh, and then we took feedback sheets uh, into, uh, from them, uh, from all the people who attended, both staff and students, or both staff and, and uh, parents. Uh, from that, I have narrowed the search down to one candidate who I am meeting with tomorrow. Uh, to discuss uh, uh, a contract. So I'm hoping that we'll have a final solution to that tomorrow. Dr. Domenico? Yeah, just maybe one at a time if you're going to go through them. Uh, yeah. Was there a, a search committee formed for, for this particular search? There was at the superintendent's level, yes. What does that mean? That means I took administrators from the district and the, uh, at the building level and we did, this, we did the screening and the initial interviews. But there was no search committee like we would do it for other? There was not a building level search committee for this position. Or um, outside members or? No. Okay. That was done through the parent forum uh, in the second round. And where, where was it advertised? I must have missed it completely. Uh, it was in the newspaper. Uh, it was in our website. And we did an all call. Uh, using the telephone system to parents of West Street students and staff. To advertise for the principal position? No, uh, the advertising for the principal position yeah, yeah. went through the school spring. I'm talking, I thought you meant oh, the, okay. the forum. Oh, no, 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 no. No, the advertising for the principal yeah. position went through school spring, which is the okay. system that we use for, for all of our positions. Okay. Thank you. And obviously internally as well. Great. Thank you. Does anyone else have any questions for Mr. Ely at this time? Okay, seeing none, let's move on to the next agenda. No, I have one oh, more. I'm sorry. sorry. I, I, I just, the other oh. one position that we have open is the director of PPS, Pupil Personnel Services. As you know, Mr. Meyer is retiring from the director of special education. Uh, we have kind of revised that position just a little bit by adding to it uh, some, some uh, responsibilities with our nurses and with our guidance program uh, to develop our guidance program. And so it's changed to a director of pupil personnel services. And again, we, we advertised that on School Spring. Uh, we interviewed uh, actually two rounds of interviews at, the, at this level uh, with, with a, again, a representative group from, the, from, our, from our district. Uh, we got through level one, or the first round of interviews, and had one solid candidate. But we weren't happy with just bringing one person to my level. Uh, so I asked it to be re-advertised. We got another pool of candidates, interviewed again, and came up with two other candidates. And then uh, this past week, uh, we met with the, those three finalists, and uh, actually it was this week, it was last week, late last week, and interviewed those uh, three people again. And uh, one subsequently withdrew from the search, which left us with two candidates. And I met with a candidate today and talked to her about the position. And uh, we'll be bringing a name forward to the school committee for approval. Because uh, this is one of, the, one of the positions that the school committee has to approve. Uh, that would uh, that'll happen at the net meeting in, in August. Uh, but we're not in a big rush because Mr. Meyer will not retire until the beginning of November. Thank you, Dr. Domingo. Uh, the, the same, same question. Uh, was there a search committee for yes. assembled? Yes. Can you tell me the composition of the search committee? Search committee was administrators, teachers, guidance counselors. And since, uh, as long as I have been here, and you have pointed it out, it is one of the positions that school committee approves. It's Correct. A, it surprises me that you did not include anybody from the school committee, or has anybody been included? On there were at the next level, at the last level. There, were school, there was a school committee member present, the chair. I was present, present for the interviews on Friday. Are we going to receive any, any opinions, any recommendations from, from the school committee member internally? So what? once recommendations comes up with the vote, it's really, it's a yes or no vote. And I just wonder uh, what kind of, what is that vote really going to represent, knowing that only one person from this body was present at the positions that we have to approve as a, as a school committee members? 
The um, school committee actually votes on the recommendation of the superintendent. It is our job to vote, but it, we go by the recommendation of the superintendent. We can certainly, I don't think it's a problem if you wanted to look at the resume or, or we can give the names out of the two individuals so that everyone here can look at them. Uh, but ultimately, it's the recommendation of the superintendent to come to us, which that recommendation will come to us at the August 21st meeting, and we will discuss it and at that time vote on who we, who his recommendation. So based on what you just said, I'm assuming that you will be informing the school committee of the candidate that will be presented. Yes, I'll send everybody an email because, on all the information. Because this cannot be voted on unless we are fully informed. Correct. We're yeah. voting Correct. On Did you get the copy of the resume and all the information? Yeah, I'm, I'm having with all this rush this year that seems to be happening, I'm having a problem of, of not really knowing um, how some of these uh, searches are being done, how the appointments are, and recommendations are being made, and votes in any kind of manner of this become equally uh, problematic for me. So I would like to request that, that uh, a, a report with original documentation be provided for the candidates who were considered and uh, in comparison with somebody else. Thank you. For Director of PPS? Yes. Mr. Lazo? Just, just a quick question. Did we get any parents on the search committee at all? For any of them? No. Thank you. Any other questions? All right, if I see no, no questions, we'll go on to the next agenda. <coughs> agenda item number 10, report of the business manager, Mr. Wiggins. I hit it underneath here. Um, very briefly, I'm just handing out for you folks to look at um, a five-year, actually it's more than five years, goes back to 2006, an expenditure history by function. As we put this together for you, um, as I looked at it, I realized that what we need to go back and actually do is do something by what I call object. I think you folks know more commonly as account as well. That is a much more detailed because this has to be done manually. So I think um, it probably won't be your next meeting. Uh, might not even be the an August meeting because of the project and making sure we get everything set to open school on time. But certainly at a September meeting, I think we want to put together the same type of report, uh, only to do it by uh, account as well, same type of history. Um, but this will give you a starting point, sort of a glimpse of how money has been expended since 2006. And then the only other thing I would note for you as you kind of go through this is 2012, of course, is still preliminary numbers. Um, there's still some invoices still yet to come in. Um, we're still closing out a few of those accounts, but these are pretty close at this point in time. And of course, we haven't had an audit yet. Um, but again, the, these numbers should be fairly close between the encumbrances and the actuals for 2012 as to where we will be. Are there any questions for Mr. Mr. Chairman, Williams? just a, a point of information. Oh, Mrs. Just Donovan. Sure. Being um, new. Um, is this just an information that for us to have, or, or is this something that we vote upon, or is it just to be this in is, the know? This is information. I think we were, this was, we were providing you a number of pieces of data tonight, and this was a piece of data that we were providing for you, and as we were providing it for you, and I looked at it, um, and I do apologize, I didn't have more time to devote to it because I really would have ideally provided you both tonight, but as I looked at this, I realized this is really only half the loaf. You really need to see the accounts as well and see that history because function tells you sort of the area. It tells you, for example, the history under the area entitled, for example, school committee or central administration or uh, principals, okay? But it doesn't tell you, for example, those individual account lines within there. Right. And that's the other piece that you really need to make this kind of make sense altogether. And so we'll get that to you within a month's time so that you can put the two pieces together and you'll have that history. And it's a good history, frankly, to have as you go into the next budget season. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you, Dr. D'Amico. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, is there a reason we are receiving this today and it wasn't provided in a packet? Uh, frankly, I was on vacation and uh, I kind of came back and um, there was a lot of project stuff going on and I did not get a chance to get this prepared for your packet, I apologize. So, so it might be better to really hold off on this document until the other one, the more comprehensive, oh, is provided. 
I agree. before and we discuss anything. Absolutely. Thank you. Any other questions? Seeing none, we'll go on to agenda number 11, school committee actions. A, vote to approve the Southbridge Middle High School 2012-2013 school handbook. Is there a motion? We have a motion, is there a second? I'll second. And we have a second. Is there any discussion on the Southbridge <coughs> Middle High School handbook? Dr. O'Leary? We, we did um, do a bit of an overview of a number of uh, corrections that needed to be made, yes? Yes, we do have some corrections. Sh should we be uh, amending this uh, to as amended, or should we wait until the corrections are done? Um, you know, we spent a lot of time, uh, fellow members spent a lot of time, uh, anyway, articulating all these taking time going over it, articulating the, the mistakes, it would seem that we ought to you know, back up a little bit, let it get done, and do a quick review and make sure there's nothing else before it goes out to the public. Once it's out there, it's out there. All right, Mr. Uh, Ely, when do these have to go to be printed to be out in time for the public, please? We'll be able to bring it back up at our next meeting on August 21st with all the corrections, or? They would not be ready for day one, right. most likely. We, we I mean, I, I'll, I'll take, let me take that back. We would have to probably pay extra to have them done in a, in a speedy fashion if we wanted to try to wait to have them approved by the 21st. Uh, I, I will say that there are a number of changes that need to be, additions that need to go in there, addresses and staff lists and the translations and those kind of things uh, and typos that will need to be fixed. Uh, traditionally that happens when we go through the printing process. We do a lot of this stuff in-house with Mr. Nibel. So a lot of those things would be fixed as we catch them. And obviously, we know they're there. We fix them quickly. So, uh, as amended, uh, you know, if you want to wait, we wait till the 21st. Then we probably have to pay extra to have them done. If we have them done commercially, some of these are done commercially. Other ones are not. Dr. O'Leary, uh, not to the intention is not to slow things down. Just to make sure things are accurate, guys. Yeah. So if, if uh, as amended is is appropriate. Just so it comes out accurately, guys. I don't want to redo it. Okay, so you want to put out an amendment? No, I'm just throwing that out there for the committee. Um, mm -hmm. We would have to have an amendment. I believe we have to have an amendment stating, depending um, on the corrections or however you want to mm -hmm. state that. Vote to approve the school committee, Southbridge Middle High School 2012-2013 school handbook with changes, changes made. I'm not sure, uh, Mr. Lazo, how, yeah, the, how can the, we make that amendment? The problem is an amendment has to be specific to the amendment of right. Mrs. Donovan's liking on some of these issues, the, the, not so much the typos. Mm -hmm. The typos will go to print, it'll be proofed, and then it'll be corrected, I would hope, as, as we discussed. Mm -hmm. But the specifics have to be in the amendment. Um, that creates a, a problem because I think Amending it is very important because some of the points that you brought out is very valid. But um, you can't say as amended because what, the, what this motion signifies is you're accepting this as written. Right. And if you say as amended, then it's going to, that there is no amendment because right. we don't know what those amendments are. There's not an amendment in front of us. So sure I think we have a dilemma as far as I think we should take our time and do it right. So the other option would be to have a meeting between between now and the 21st and try to push it up to the beginning of August, uh, <clears throat> you know, and, and make some changes based on the input that we got tonight and input that people would send us over this mm -hmm. next few days. Uh, you just don't have a lot of time. If you wanted to wait till, give me a date. The, 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 I, I don't know what the calendar looks like. So, uh, <clears throat> the, the what's the second week in the second Tuesday, the 14th. If you wanted to wait till the 14th, it gives us another week. Yes, the 14th. Uh, that's an option. Uh, I mean, we're still going to really hump to get it done, but we'll do this we can. Yes, that would be the 14th of August. Madam Jim. That's, that's a week before our next meet, our next meeting, which is the 21st. Yes, Mr. Could, Lazo. Could we um, next year? Could we? Uh, have a mini committee of some sort or somebody to overview the document appointed by the school committee. And I think that uh, if, if, if 
these issues were come up before the meeting, they could have been um, corrected and then presented as completed. Uh, I wish the school committee would probably have a little input um, with the administration. Uh, not that we want to write the handbook, but we'd like to see it done correctly uh, and to cover all the thoughts of, of the committee. Yes, I, I think Next that actually would be not, not right. that probably be a good idea, so that we're not running into this last minute and actually <clears throat> costing us more money to print it because we're waiting for corrections. <clears throat> Madam Chair. Okay. Yes, Mrs. McLaughlin. Um, in going through all these uh, these handbooks, and it's obvious that a lot of hard work and time has gone into them, and I certainly absolutely appreciate that. Um, however, there's a lot of inconsistencies in these handbooks, even with the way their policies are written. I, next year, would really like us to move towards a district student handbook, whereby each individual school, if they have policies that are unique to them, could either prepare a mini handbook for that school or pages inside the school, uh, inside the handbook separately. I'll give you a couple of examples. Um, if I'm a parent who has a child at Eastford Road School, West Street School, and the new middle high school, um, attendance is written differently. There are different missions in some of those uh, handbooks that are not necessarily unique to that school. It's just some of the district mission statements are different than others, and I think some may be more updated than others, and there's a lot of confusion there. And I'd like to see some consistency overall in that. Um, for example, in Eastford Road School, the section on bullying is eight pages long, but in the Charlton Street and West Street handbooks, it's three quarters of a page. Um, I just think it's very confusing as a parent. And as a district, if we want to start getting on the same page, not that we want all schools to be uh, homogenous necessarily, but to have some consistency for families so that they're not like, wait a minute, what's the absenteeism policy at the high school? Wait, that's not the absenteeism policy at the mm -hmm. you know, elementary school. I think that's very confusing. I'd like to see, ultimately, us work towards that. In addition to simple things like putting contents in alphabetical order. If I'm a parent that's going to look for a policy, oh, what's school lunch? I have to f read through the table of contents and thumb through it, and I think that could be done in order. Some of the handbooks take the actual uh, school committee policy on a certain area and just cut and paste and put that in the book. Others kind of paraphrase the policy. It's all over the place. And um, again, I know that it's late in the game to be making these uh, suggestions or revisions, but for next year, I'd really like to see that something that is addressed. Thank you. Dr. D'Amico? I'd like to make a motion to table vote to approve Southridge Middle High School 1213 school handbook uh, until our next scheduled meeting. Second. Okay, we have a motion out there to table the voting of the Southbridge Middle High School 2012-2013 school handbook till our next meeting. Discussion. Is there any discussion? Could we Second. change that table to postpone? Postpone, I think the postpone is table a better word. Means exactly the same thing. No, Post, it um, yes, it does. Excuse you me. Can table to excuse a me. Date. If you do look in the Roberts rules, postpone is different than tabling. Tabling sometimes it is, it's the wrong word to use. We should postpone it so that we put a date to it, and that's better than tabling it. I did put a date to it. You can use whichever word. I didn't ask indefinitely. I said until next regular school committee meeting. Can we just take a recess so I can take a look and see which is the proper way of doing it, whether it's postponing or tabling it, please? I'd like to take a five minute recess or just a two minute recess to, to uh, straighten this out. Thank you.
not go through the same process on, the, on A, B, C, and D? Can we just amend it to table them, or however that word is going to be used, for all of them instead of doing this four more times? Thank you. Madam, Madam Chair, can you roll on that? Can we vote on all five motions with the same? Yes, I believe we can do that to cut time. Okay. All right, so we have a motion on the table and, sec on, and seconded to table the votes on all the handbooks to the next scheduled meeting. So we have a motion and a second. Correct. Are there any more discussion on that? I just, I just want to make sure I know what date, or I don't want to get hung up on technicalities, but if you say scheduled, are we, are we talking the 21st because that's on our meeting, or are we going to say the 14th? Well, we have to have a motion for the next date. If we're going to change it from the 21st to the 14th, we have to have another motion for that, which we can put down further. J. Yes, it's already in J. Okay. So you're going to approve your schedule tonight in item J? Mm -hmm. So when you get to item J, you can amend that schedule to reflect the 14th instead of the 21st? Okay. And that will be the next scheduled meeting at that point. And it's all Mr. Lazo? Uh, you can call it a special school committee meeting to handle one agenda item, so you don't have to stay here all night. We, we know what we want to do as a school committee. We want to correct that unless there are other issues we want to deal with. But I think if you call it a special school committee meeting for the explicit operations of this, we can actually spend some good time together as far as the, the, the books. And then after we can go through them and then vote them yeah. that night, that would be a single agenda item. I would suggest that when the time comes up, uh, okay. as Mr. Stevenson. said. Thank you. Any other discussion on the motion? Mr. Principal? Yeah, to, through you to, um, to Scott. Um, then are you a, a special school committee meeting for the 14th? and suggesting that we keep the 21st also or deal with that on on j deal with that on j okay anyone else all righty so we have a motion and a second to table all the voting on all the handbooks to be postponed to the next scheduled school committee meeting can i have a roll call please mr lazo yes mrs mclaughlin yes dr o'leary yes mrs principe yes Mrs. Woodruff? Yes. Dr. Domenko? Yes. Mrs. Donovan? Yes. Seven yes. Motion passes. Thank you. And E, vote to assign school committee members to sign payroll warrants. One needed plus one alternate needed. Do we have a motion for that, please? So moved. We have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. You, um, and discussion? Yeah, you're going to need more than a simple motion. You are going to need to assign names here. Um, by law, you can have a subcommittee for payroll warrants of one named member and one named alternate. Um, and then uh, that will suffice the law for signing payroll warrants. So we'll talk about the expenditure warrants in, in the next action item. Um, the idea of having one person who will regularly come in and sign the payroll warrants is to expedite those warrants being approved. The alternate is, of course, if that person is not available, we would call the alternate and they would come in and sign. I'm asking at this time for a volunteer. Is there any volunteers who would like to be the main person to sign payroll warrants? I volunteer. Thank you, Mrs. Donovan. Mrs. Donovan volunteers to be the main signer and then we will need an alternate. Is there a volunteer for an alternate signer? The alternate. Thank you, Mrs. Principe will be the alternate, alternate signer. So if your vote motion can then reflect those two names, that would be great. All right, so here we go again. So vote to assign school committee members, Mrs. Donovan as the, the main signer of payroll warrants and Mrs. Principe as the alternate payroll warrants. Do we, we have a motion and a second already out there? You can withdraw that motion and do another motion with the name. Yeah, that would be the best way to do it. That might be the quickest way. Okay, so we need to withdraw the motion and start from the beginning, please. Can I make a motion then? Mrs. Donovan. I would like to withdraw the motion of vote to assign school committee members to sign payroll warrants, one needed plus one alternate needed. Thank you. There's a motion to resend. No. No, there's a motion to she withdrew it. withdraw. Okay, so let's start from the beginning. E, vote to assign Mrs. Donovan 
to sign payroll warrants and Mrs. Principe as the alternate to sign payroll, pay, payroll, excuse me. So moved. We have a motion, do we have a second? Second. Thank you, we have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? Roll call, please. Mrs. McLaughlin? Yes. Dr. O'Leary? Yes. Mrs. Principe? Yes. Mrs. Woodruff? Yes. Dr. Domingo? Yes. Mrs. Donovan? Yes. Mr. Lazo? Yes. Seven yes. Motion passes, thank you. If, yes, Mr. If, Wiggins. If, if I may, Madam Chairperson, speak to F before we begin a motion. Because okay. again, you will need three people as primary signatories for the expenditure warrants in one alternate. Um, the process here is very similar. These are the warrants that show up under your consent agenda. And again, the law allows you to have a subcommittee of three sign that, and then that shows up at a subsequent meeting on your consent agenda. The process here is a little touchier because there's a lot of vendors who are waiting for checks. And we, if you remember back in the spring for the new members, we kind of instituted a new process where we used a three-person subcommittee to sign off on the, on the expenditure warrant. And the idea was that we would have the warrant ready on Thursday afternoon so that it would be available on Thursday night uh, up until 8 o'clock downstairs and then either Katie or I come in at 7 o'clock in the morning and have it available at 7 o'clock in the morning, Friday morning, to try and get those three signature, signatures on that warrant so that we can, whoops, excuse me, so that we can get it um, moving, get that process moving, because without those three signatures, we can't get the process moving downstairs as far as um, getting the warrant reviewed and getting those checks ultimately out the door to the vendors. Um, I think what we did as the initial experiment was the um, budget, let me see if I can get the name right, the Budget Transportation and Facilities Committee, I don't, did I get them in the right order? Mm -hmm. Okay, were the three that signed, um, and I think that's a logical group. I would tell you that other school committees don't always do that. What they do is they look for three members or, or whatever the number is of their subcommittee who are local. Um, so this is a decision that the committee needs to make as to what those three members are going to make. And again, like the payroll warrant, you need to have an alternate in case one of those three members is not available. So that is really kind of the decision process you need to come up with tonight, hopefully, as to determine the three members that you want to have sign the expenditure warrants for the next year. Okay, so I'll be looking, uh, Mr. Lazo, sorry. Uh, just to the, to the, uh, the signing portion, uh, it, it, we're, we're treating it much like a subcommittee that mm -hmm. will sign the warrants. Okay. Then it becomes the consent item, correct? On the agenda? Correct. Right. Where I have the problem is not with the three signatures assigned and the alternate, because that is a subcommittee. I'm a big believer in subcommittees. It's referring to the full committee and I heard tonight, it was, I'm still learning, but no discussion because it's a consent item. That, well. What, 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 where my problem lies, Terry, is, mm -hmm. is uh, that when a subcommittee recommends to a full committee, it's a recommendation. Mm -hmm. And you can alter that recommendation. And in parliamentary procedure, I always said that if there's an, an, an agenda item, you know, it has, they're very, very explicit about what's debatable and what's not debatable. And the consent item, I don't know what I think. There's from. absolutely a process for what, what the process would be, and we haven't really used the consent item agenda the way the consent agenda is intended. But the way the consent agenda is intended is that items on the consent agenda would be voted on unless any member wanted to pull something off. And if they wanted to pull it off, absolutely it could be debated. Well, that, but the, I, the idea is if there's no member who wants to debate it, then you would leave it on the consent agenda and simply vote it. Well, that's the pur pur purpose of, of open government is that when a subcommittee recommends a consent item, that the committee has the opportunity when the motion and the second mm -hmm. as a committee to vote the warrant because it's only yeah. recommended by subcommittee that we can sit, th not that I think anything would happen with these mm -hmm. items. Terry, I'm not questioning your integrity. No, no, that's fine. The process. 
the due process of keeping government directly involved with the process through right to committee. When subcommittees start doing it without the, 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 the uh, approval after the subcommittee comes up with a consensus, they report to the full committee. And then all of a sudden it should be altered by full committee if, if wanted, you know? My, my suggestion would be, and I'm happy to do it, if the, if the committee does not want to have a consent agenda, per se, because consent agendas frequently contain not just these items, but minutes and all kinds of things, and then the committee members who want to debate something will pull that item out, so it's only something that needs to be debated is pulled out. But if you want to have those all available to debate at any time, simply get rid of the term of consent agenda, and we'll just put it as warrants. Madam Chairman, through the chair, the, the the school committee on the ed reform and the mass ed reform is explicit on yep. two things. Yep. We do policy mm -hmm. and we do budget. And Absolutely. to me, when it comes to the financial portion, I wouldn't take that away from the committee to have the opportunity. Do I think right. anybody is going to do anything? No. But if there is an item on there mm -hmm. that somebody wants the question, mm -hmm. that you say, can we just pull this item off the warrant? We have and a question about this can. is not appropriate or we think it's not right. Or, you know, Absolutely. we have the opportunity to, to, to look at the warrants and then after to say, geez, you know, this one warrant, I'm going to vote them through, but I want to amend it. Yep. We have the ability. But if there is no discussion, and it's, it's basically taking our uh, duties away, and, so to speak. And, and again, on the consent agenda, any member always has that right. They don't even need a second. They would simply say, I have questions about warrant number 48, okay? and it would immediately just be pulled off. We would put it under, I believe it goes under new business, and we would discuss it under new business, and questions would be asked, and if they couldn't be answered, we wouldn't vote on that warrant. I just think the consent item is a dangerous item. For That's, the, that part of it is an easy part to go away if the committee is uncomfortable with it. Thank you. Thank you. I guess now at this time I want to ask for volunteers. Are there any volunteers who would like to um, be able to sign the expenditure warrants? I need three and an alternate. Is there anyone? I'll volunteer. Thank you, Mrs. McLaughlin. I will also volunteer. I need one more person. I'm local most of the time. Thank you, Mr. Lazo. And thank you, Mrs. Principe. Okay. F, vote to assign Mrs. McLaughlin, Mrs. Woodruff, and Mr. Lazo as three members of the committee to sign expenditure warrants as needed, plus Mrs. Principe as an alternate. Do I have a motion? So moved. Thank second. You. Thank you. Motion by Mrs. Principe, second by Mrs. Donovan. Do we have discussion? Any discussion? I, 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 Dr. Domenico. I, I, I just wonder, Terry, if you could remember during your tenure here with us, when was the last time anybody from the people who are signing any of the warrants has challenged the line item or had questions about the line item? Ever? Yeah, I've had, um, I haven't had many questions. I think I've had four questions, as I recall, that I've had people ask me, what is this? A anything significant? Um, like half a million dollars? Three of, the four, three of the four, I believe, are tuition questions. Okay. Because those are usually fairly substantial bills. As a result of those questions, has ever anything needed to be corrected? No. Thank you. Any other discussion? If none, can we have a roll call, please? Dr. O'Leary? Yes. Mrs. Principe? Yes. Mrs. Woodruff? Yes. Dr. Domingo? Yes. Mrs. Donovan? Yes. Mr. Lazo? Yes. Mrs. McLaughlin? Yes. Seven yes. Motion passes. Thank you. G moved that the Southbridge School Committee authorize the school business manager to enter into a fair market value release agreement with Expert Laser Services Incorporated of Southbridge, Massachusetts and or the leasing company that <coughs> Expert Laser Services Incorporated uses in the amount not to exceed $1,403.97 per month 
for a term not to exceed 36 months for the purposes of leasing a high-speed black and white copier and a high-speed color copier for the Southbridge Middle High School. This lease is in accordance with Massachusetts State Purchasing Contract OFF 32. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second. Thank you. A motion by Dr. Domingo, seconded by Mr. Lazo. Any discussion? Mrs. Donovan. Thank you. Through you to Mr. Wigan. I just didn't know if you could just take a quick moment to just give me some information of what the Massachusetts State Purchasing Contract OFF 32 actually is. It's actually the commonly called the copier contract. Okay. Virtually every copier company in the state is on that. Um, I uh, basically invited um, probably about a half a dozen different copier companies, including our current vendor, to make proposals. Uh, Expert Laser, who frankly I didn't know about until I came to Southbridge, um, came in, made a very effective proposal, and frankly also had the best machine, I thought, both in its consumer ranking, uh, the speed of the machines that I wanted to put in there, how they tie in to the graphics program that we're offering, how they'll be able to produce the type of things we want to be able to produce. We talked about these, these booklets tonight, mm -hmm. being able to do things like saddle stitching, uh, the booklet covers, those types of things in the future. Um, they really presented a very good program for us. The fact that I can literally walk to them, I thought was an added plus. So uh, I'm pleased to present there proposal tonight and frankly uh, they're also the most cost effective. Thank you. Just one more question. Um, the 1,403.97, that's the actual lease agreement itself. Does that include toner or is toner will be above and beyond that? It does for both machines for the first year, for one machine for all three years. For the color machine in years two and three, we will be responsible for some of the supplies, but not all of the supplies. That's typical I know for color machines. Toner can be very expensive. Yeah. That's why I was asking. It's still a very low cost per copy. It's uh, I want to say it's under three cents per copy, mm -hmm. or maybe it's three point two cents per copy, somewhere around there. Uh, given that co color copying a few years ago was like seven cents a copy, it's come down quite a bit. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. Any other discussion? If there is no further discussion, can we have a roll call, please? Mrs. Principe? Yes. Mrs. Woodruff? Yes. Dr. Domingo? Yes. Mrs. Donovan? Yes. Mr. Lazo? Yes. Mrs. McLaughlin? Yes. Dr. O'Leary? Yes. Seven yes. Thank you. Motion passes. H, vote to reorganize the middle and high school administration to create a new position of principal of Southbridge Middle High School. Job description has been attached, everyone should have had it. And three assistant principals for the Southbridge Middle High School, thereby abolishing the current positions titled Southbridge High School principal, Southbridge Middle Mary E. Wells school principal, high school assistant principal, and middle Mary E. Wells school assistant principal slash dean of students. Do I have a motion? So moved. I have a motion. Do I have a second, please? I second the motion. Thank you. I have a motion, Mr. Principe, seconded by Mrs. McLaughlin. Any discussion? Mr. Lazo. Uh, there's a long history behind this item. Um, approximately 10 years ago, I was appointed to the uh, building committee. Um, We've dealt with three different superintendents, uh, numerous administrators uh, through the years. Um, in the construction process, what we've done is we've built two separate buildings for two separate administrators. And if you go to the school and you look at the construction of it, um, it was studied heavily by Dr. Hanley, myself, and, and various other people. We've had other towns try to go to one, then they came back to, to two. And, uh, and I'm a very big advocate of, of two administrators. Um, we've, we've ran into problems with Dean of Students already. We've, uh, as a school committee, we agreed to have a Dean of Student at Wells to try it out, see if it will work. And um, we're getting rid of this, this Dean of Students that we have there. Um, and from what I'm understanding, it was told it, it, it didn't work very well. One of the problems was when it came to um, evaluations, a Dean can't evaluate um, where the assistant principal, say this, the assistant principal principal, when you do evaluations to teachers, they do 
um, work hand in hand doing the job of, of and it's a big job to pray uh, to um, to evaluate your whole building. Um, there are numerous, numerous things and reasons, and I don't want to beat it to death. I know that we had a meeting before and, and we voted against it. Um, I think it's a very dangerous uh, thing to do at this point, going into a building and we're taking out two of the people that actually were very instrumental architecturally with the pod system, with the actual uh, the alignment with the curriculum and stuff that's supposed to go on with the technology and the layout of the whole building and use. In 30 days before we enter uh, the building, I think it's going to be detrimental to our system. Of course, that is my opinion. Uh, and other people have other opinions, and I respect them. But the thing is, we always thought going into this building was to be stable. We have uh, staff that is very unstable right now, wondering what, what the future is. Um, we hear that the, the, uh, the, the principal has already been picked for the, um, for the position. Um, it's going to be Tammy Perot, we hear. Um, so, and, and with all the, the shuffling that we're having, we're not having a lot of parent input. We're not having uh, search committees like we did in the past. It's been almost operating in a vacuum. Hurry up, let's get it done. Um, what shocked me is we had five, three or four, we had the SPED director, curriculum coordinator, fifth grade, uh, and, and, and the assistant principal at Mary Wells. And when you have about four holes or five holes in your boat, and you want to create more holes in the boat in a $76 million school that you're going into, you're not giving your staff and, and, and a lot of the parents a lot of confidence of, geez, you know, I know the kids have, uh, you know, I have a child in high school and the big talk is what's going to happen with us? So I, I know when you're sitting at the top and, and you're an administrator, you just say, well, that's the way it is. It's going to work. Don't worry about it. I've been in government 28 years, 29 years, and, and I've heard this and I've seen this, and it's a, it's a step in a dangerous area. Um, and, 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 you know, if you step into that area, you, you're taking a chance. I know that if we turned around and went into the building with our, with our principals, we know that we can do the transition, move in. Um, if, if a year or two from now something is not working, um, the thing that, that, that kind of st stuck with me was when, when Mr. Ely announced that we went from level two to level one at the high school um, as far as underperforming. And then we turned around and the graduation rates up and our MCAS scores are moving in the right direction. And I'm sitting there saying, it's working. Why are we operating in a vacuum at this point? The only thing we need is more time uh, with our accelerated uh, turnaround plan. And um, I, I really believe that the foundation has been built um, by the previous superintendent and the structures in place. And I think that, uh, you know, overhauling everything halfway through and when you're almost done with the project, you're ready to hand the keys over and the indecision and the I don't knows and all of what we're going to create is going to be detrimental to our school system. Um, I could be wrong, but uh, I just, after the years of experience I've had with superintendents and, and different people that come into the, the system, I'm sure their intentions are genuine. Maybe they want to do it a certain way. It's great. And then the next time, the next latest and greatest comes in, we've seen curriculum coordinators come in. Put everyday math in. Mr. Lazo, or I'm just giving. We're getting, I know, but we're getting a little off. So oh, I'll wind it up. I just the example is when someone comes in and creates a program and says, "This is what's going to work for you, Southbridge," and then all of a sudden we say, "Oh, great! We embrace it. We do it," and then it fails. Now we're going to get out of it. Mm -hmm. This is one of those times I feel real strong that when we move in this direction, I think we're going to be sorry. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Principe. I would, um, this did come before the school committee, um, the, the previous school committee, I think last December, and actually it was tabled, it, it was not voted down, I wanted to correct that, but for the sake of new members um, through you to Mr. Ely, mm -hmm. new members on the board and for the public, could you speak to this issue and um, justify careful. the one principle? Well, in, in the uh, high careful. my belief all along uh, has been, and I proposed this back in October actually. Mm -hmm. uh, my belief all along has been it's one building, one principal. Whether you run a middle school program and a high school program, and whether it's one accountability or two has always been a question. Uh, I've gotten different things from the state. I got something else from Linda Foisey today, uh, the assistant commissioner, uh, on this, uh, that issue. But ultimately, the overall 
administrative structure of the building has always, in my mind, been built for one principal. Uh, so I, I respectfully disagree with the concept of having two principals in one building. I, I spent two hours Sunday walking the entire property uh, at Tory, one, 132 Torrey Road. And every time I looked back at the building, I saw one building. Uh, every time. I didn't see two buildings, I saw one. I saw one school. I saw a building that needed a leader uh, with a vision that an entire staff can buy into and the entire student body can, can buy into and strive for over the next seven years uh, for the sixth graders. Uh, for seven years that you enter that building, uh, I saw a building that sits in an area that's rather remote that uh, if something happens, as has been brought to me a couple of times, who's going to be in charge? Uh, that's going to be a question if you have two leaders, uh, not if you have one. Uh, and my, my just fun, fundamental belief always has been as, a, uh, as, a, as an educator that one leader is always better than two when it comes to leading a building. Uh, the research has shown that a, the, the critical part of building success is one strong building instructional leader. And that's what I believe in. Dr. D'Amico. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, I guess in general, as a part of the discussion, nobody in particular. Um, we are four weeks, probably not even from opening a new building, and uh, the least, my feeling, is that this is an irresponsible move on the part of administration. Unless we are provided with the name of the person who will lead the opening of the new building in four weeks, and the new busing system, and the new everything that's coming down the pipe, I am not willing to support this motion in any denomination. I agree completely with Mr. Laz that have it, having an established leadership team of two buildings, moving them in parallel into a new setting, it is the smartest thing that we can possibly do. I do, again, agree as well with Mr. Ely that eventually, probably, a building of this kind of complexity would probably operate eventually, critical word being eventually operate, under a single person. We're not, not even close to being there. The door has not opened. I think it's an irresponsible move to be moving 1,100 students <coughs> into a new building without us knowing who's going to be leading this building. And I wonder if anybody else on this panel feels comfortable supporting this plan in the absence of knowing who this, this, this leader that I assume Mr. Ely has in mind, because he better, we are four weeks away, and if he doesn't, then I'm really nervous. And um, Mr. Ely said that, that he needs a leader that the staff can buy into. And I would really like you to identify for us how you envision this happening with whose leadership. Thank you. Any other discussion? Dr. O'Leary. Thank you, Ms. Uh, Madam Chairman. Um, I'd like to take a couple minutes uh, for, with my own trepidation on uh, this kind of decision. Mr. Ely, actually, thank you for bringing back the uh, Friday, October 28th, 2011 superintendent's report because I did not remember just when it occurred. Um, a number of things. During that meeting, I remember specifically asking you what was it that the state had as issue about one principal versus two. You couldn't really articulate that, but you did comment something about an address, some, something, in, well, I still didn't have an answer. So you just sort of left it. But the impression was the state had all but dictated that it should be one principal, that's it. And that's where you left it. Uh, fast forward to just a couple months ago, we had the state here, and one of my colleagues, Mr. Lazo, specifically asked the question. And at that time, the representative of the state did not weigh in as to what should be this way or that way. It was up to us to do it. It has succeeded in both fashions. The problem I have is that, that I feel like what you told me, as articulated in here, mostly, uh, was misrepresent a misrepresentation to me and the school committee and the citizens as to what the state uh, dictated as to how we had to do things. So to me, uh, th this, 
I, I have very little. I have very little trust uh, in reference to this decision and how it was, how, how you've come to it. I, I really do. Uh, I wonder what other motives uh, may be in mind. That's number one. Number Dr. two. Larry, yes, ma'am. Motives. Can we keep those kind of words out because it's not really appropriate? Surely, Thank I you. take that back. Strike that. Uh, number two, as uh, as pointed out by a number of colleagues in the past, history is really important. Um, Mr. Lazo t just brought up 10 years ago, he was brought on to the uh, school building committee. And that took uh, a lot of planning. He had to bring it to the citizens, the parents, uh, the citizens, uh, students, administrators, and all the time it came as, we, it, it came as a deal with two, two principals, uh, with, with two different entities uh, for the last, well, nine years. This is how it was presented to us, the taxpayers, the citizens, the students. I can keep on going uh, over and over again on it. And here in the 11th hour, uh, you seem to think it's appropriate to, to put all that aside, to, to, to disregard what we promised the citizens and the taxpayers here uh, for, as I said, I, I don't know uh, why. I, I find it really disturbing I'm, 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 uh, that uh, you pursue this, I, I really do. So I guess you know where I'm going on it. And I, I, I want, uh, I really want, it's really important here in the 11th hour that uh, the citizens take note. Uh, a lot of hard work, a lot of blood, sweat, tears has, has gone into this uh, f from the community itself as well. And uh, to, to just uh, push, push aside all that we've said, all that we've promised, all that we've done for, as I said, I, I'm not sure why. Um, it seems really, really uh, inappropriate to me. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. O'Leary. Is there anyone else for discussion? Mr. Donovan? Yes, thank you. Um, first of all, I just want to maybe let people know what I know so far in reaction to um, Ms. Domingo's um, comments as well as Mr. O'Leary's. Um, first of all, it was stated earlier, I believe it may have been Mr. Lazo, that the, the role of the school committee is policy and budget. So based on that, I'm trying to think through this process logically. It does not say policy, budget, personnel. If we are looking for a specific name of a person to fill a position, I believe we are not entitled to that name. Number one, that is a personnel issue that is not something that should be discussed in a public forum. Second of all, personnel issues in the hiring of school principals as well as leadership team um, personnel ultimately is the role and responsibility and authority, as I understand it, of the superintendent. That being said, we talk about the 11th hour. I can look back at documentation that was given to me in my packet that this was an issue that was brought up last fall with a prior school committee, and a correction was made that the issue was not in fact voted down, it was in fact tabled. And it is my understanding that if something is tabled, it needs to come off the table and be rediscussed before the next, we'll say, reorganizational meeting, whether new members are part of a committee or not. The fact that that issue stayed on the table past June 30th of this year, it is now a new issue. It's a new day, it's a new committee, it's a new proposal. To say that it's the 11th hour I think is unfair because obviously this is something that people should have been thinking about a long time ago as to coming up with the actual administrative configuration of that school. And I have to look at it as totally removing an individual anybody personal, whether who they are, I don't even think of people at all in this discussion. My role here is to do what's best for the children in this district. And in doing what's best for the children of this district, I have to look at, in my opinion, what do I feel is best 
for that school, a school in which, however, my own child will be in. So while it is a community uh, topic for me, it's a personal topic because it affects my child and my, my family. So when I look at my rationale for one principal in that building, I, similarly to Mr. Ely, say I look at it, it is one building. Yes, it has two wings. I am perfectly clear of the layout and the floor plan and perhaps the intention. I was not privy to anything to do with building this school, so I'm not gonna comment on um, you know, how it was designed. I look at it for what it is. It is one building. And for me to have one or more than one person being in charge just doesn't make sense. It's an accountability issue on two parts for me. The state, and I agree with Mr. O'Leary, I mean with Mr. O'Leary, that they've been wishy-washy. In my opinion, the state at one point did say we need to have one for accountability status relative to our, our level four, our accountability. Then, Eva Mitchell did clearly respond to Mr. Lazo at the February 14th meeting and said she didn't care. The state doesn't care. I was at a forum last week with Dr. Bonda, the first question that was asked at that forum. What is the state's opinion policy on this new school? Her clear answer was the state does not care. It is a district decision. Mm -hmm. So I look at that, that it's up to us as a school committee because I assume district decision means school committee and um, you know, with, the, with the guidance of a superintendent. For me, it's all about oversight in case of emergency. The buck has to stop somewhere. If you have two principals with differing philosophies, at some point, they're gonna be butting heads. And if there's a state of emergency and one principal saying go out door A and the other one says, oh, I don't agree with that, they should go out door B, and I'm at home thinking, what door is my son going out of? There has to be somebody at the top for that. And I think that as long as there's a process that's in place to selecting the best candidate for that, that's important to me. I want to protect the integrity of the selection process. If this is a um, forum that, or a configuration that we think is best for the district. I have questions for Mr. Ely as far as who will actually do what. We have job descriptions, but they're still not clear specifically who will take care of what wing and, and different things like that. I guess the bottom line for me is what I, basically after all that, what I just wanna say is I'm here to do what's best for all students. And in my opinion, we need to take the personnel issue out of it. We're looking at policy. We're looking as a district what is the best configuration at that new school on all levels. And for me, it is having one captain and one chief in one building. Thank you. I believe Dr. Domingo was next. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, through you to, to Mrs. Donovan, um, I, I'm really surprised and a little disappointment, disappointed that you don't see through the policy and budget responsibilities that we have the content of charting educational policy and its execution in this district is a vital responsibility of the school committee. That, that, that is just absolutely unbelievable to me. This is one of the most important things that we have done in this town, is come up with the building for, for Midland High School. The vote we're gonna take today we, is gonna determine to a large extent where and how we move into our middle school and high school education and how successful we can be. And to think for a minute that that is a personnel issue is to me insulting. Mm -hmm. As this being long in the making, maybe Mr. Ely can update us on the process that he has undertaken in, in his effort to, con to convince us how this is really better for our district that he has taken to establish this leadership group that will convince me and fellow colleagues who may have questions that this would be a smart decision for us. Are we all set? Dr. Yes. Domenico, okay, I'm Mrs. Principe, please. Uh, yes, uh, Madam Chair, through you to Mr. Ely. Um, one of the previous speakers, and I believe it was, was Mr. Lazo, spoke to the um, position of Dean of Students 
that was at the middle school and I believe he said it didn't work out because that individual could not evaluate teachers. So I, I would assume that person was in there as more or less a disciplinarian. I would like Mr. Ely for you to expound on the three, <clears throat> with one principal, the three assistant principals or vice principals, whatever they're going to be named, um, their roles and responsibility. Sure. The responsibilities of the assistant principals broadly are to support the initiatives of the building principal, to monitor student behavior, to uh, perform assigned tasks based on their level of expertise in certain areas. I can envision a number, depending on who those people are, a number of scenarios where uh, the three assistant principals would divide up the, the seven grades. Uh, you could have a six, seven, an eight, nine, and a 10, 12 assistant principal. You could have different people taking different departments in terms of observation and evaluation of staff. The reason that I sort of abandoned the idea of dean of students was really because of the new educator evaluation framework uh, that the state has been working on for at least a year now in terms of getting it out and, and, and uh, talking to us as administrators about the paperwork involved and, and the time it takes to do those things and the amount of administrative personnel it's going to take to do those evaluations. So I sort of abandoned the idea of the dean of students uh, because of the level of work that needs to be done with 80 staff members to get involved in the new evaluator framework uh, and to make sure that we do it properly. Uh, so the assistant principals basically support the principal and they would work together as a leadership team for the building uh, to make sure that, that we're, we're going in a common direction with a common message uh, based on the, the, the vision of that leader and, and, uh, and the uh, uh, bring the staff together in a, in a positive direction. Mr. Lazo? I agree with Mrs. Donovan 100% about personnel is not our job. The thing is, this policy and structure is our job. And I do want the best for our kids. When the superintendent said he was walking away from the building and looked back and saw one building, Obviously, he wasn't looking at the building on how it was constructed. We've constructed two separate schools under one roof, two totally separate schools. If I took you on a tour and I showed you, which are two different concepts, we have the middle school concept, which a principal, which we've been, I've been on search committees for, has always looked for the middle school concept, the team teaching. You go to the high school, and that's a different concept. And then we're going to add, uh, when you have two different concepts, two different buildings, you walk up to the building and it says middle school, high school. The reason why we went with this concept was centralized services to save the taxpayers some money. It wasn't, it wasn't to get one administrator. And the study show? Oh my God. Neil Hanley and I looked at these studies and we saw towns that went to a single that the next year they went right back. And it was caused a lot of chaos, but they went right back to two administrators. And I sit back here today and I look at it, and if you go into this building, anybody that's taught it, anybody with an ounce of common sense looked at this building and said it's one building, doesn't, doesn't know what they're talking about. There's two different entrances. There are two different uh, buildings, complete buildings. The pod system, one through six on the first, I mean the sixth grade is on the first floor, seventh grade is on the second floor, and the eighth grade is on the third floor. You go over where the freshman academy is, the parents of this district didn't want their sixth grade kids with 12th grade kids. So we said, let's build two separate buildings. And that's what we promised these taxpayers. And they're paying the freight on this. And when I look at the whole counterpoint of what you told the people, I don't worry about it. As an elected official, I think that nobody knows that building better than I do with the guys that constructed it with their own hands. And I look at it and I take the personalities and put them aside. What is in the best interest of Southbridge? Ten years of studies showed that this is the best interest of Southbridge. Not by Scott Lazo, by Joanne Austin, by Dale Hanley, by different principals that have come and gone, the experts that we brought in in the early stages to find out what concept. Should we be doing this? 
Everything gave us the green light to build two separate buildings with centralized services. We just went through a big battle over the school nurse. They constructed two nurses' offices. The assistant principal in either building are on the second floor with the disciplinary problems. You're going to tell me that one dean of students or assistant principal is going to handle 1,100 students' discipline? You have one down at Wells that can't even control the, the discipline that we need. We need more of that. When we talk about curriculum, the overlap of the curriculum. Mr. Lazo, Mr. Lazo, I, I'm sorry, but this is becoming a debate. We're Ma not Madam Chair, you are out of order. There was no motion to limit the discussion on the motion. There does not have to be a motion to limit the discussion. Yes, there yes, needs there to be. It has to be a point of order. Yes. It's not supposed to be a debate. Point of order, order Madam Chair. We're going on a debate. It's a discussion. In closing, the only thing I want to do, it, it, this is passionate. It's near my heart. I spent 10 years traveling the state. We have a curriculum team that ELA, mathematics. We're going to add a curriculum person, an assistant principal of curriculum. More bureaucracy, more distance, more buffers, more of this? No. What we have is working. If it's not broke, don't change it. We're heading in the right direction. Teachers are the most valuable people on curriculum. We need another person to tell a teacher what to do. We've got them on a revolving door now what to do. Mr. Madam Chairman, thank you very much for being patient. You're welcome, Mr. Lazo. Is there anyone else for discussion? Yes, ma'am. Dr. O'Leary. Uh, th through you, Madam, to comments by uh, Ms. Donovan. Um, if you go back to 10 years and then you bring Mr. Ely in in the 11th hour, just year by year, that's about the 11th hour, huh? Uh, Mr. Dr. O'Leary, please. We have. Uh, Dr. O'Leary, please watch what you're saying. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Uh, we we have discussed this from the start. Ten years ago, we started discussing this. Ten years ago, we brought this to the public. Ten years ago, this was constructed in a way. Uh, so please do not uh, bring up. This should have been discussed earlier. This was discussed at the outset. You may not have been part of it, but it was discussed at it. And finally, I have three children going there. The number of children you have going there does not dictate how much, uh, how, how involved you are in the system. Dr. O'Leary. If that were the case, then I, I guess there's a, there's a hierarchy here. So please, don't, don't bring up that my Dr. child will be in this enough system. enough now. This is going. Uh, you, thank you for you your time, Madam the Chair. Chair. Thank you. You're welcome. Mrs. McLaughlin. Hi. Uh, thank you. Um, in researching this issue, I did a number of things. One of the things I did was I looked at the school districts in Massachusetts that have combined middle high school in the same building. How were they configured? The, I found about 14 of them. Adams, Avon, Carver, Chatham, Cohasset, Georgetown, Granby, Ipswich, Lee, Millbury, Quaybog, Webster, West Boylston, Wetch, West Bridgewater, and Wichenden. All but one of those have one principal. Um, um, all but one of those have um, the, uh, what am I trying to say here? All but one of those have the structure in place that would be a high school principal, high school vice principal, middle school principal, middle school vice principal. They have all made a decision that you can't have two dogs walking the same leash. Um, the reasons for one principal that I could research and cite include accountability of day-to-day -day operations, DESC oversight, crisis and emergency management, Philosophy, it is unwise to have competing philosophies on instruction, discipline, those kind of issues. The argument that people have made to me publicly in the grocery store, uh, have called me, have emailed me about, interestingly enough, and even occurred here tonight, as I said, eventually we do think there needs to be one principle. Eventually, but just not now. There's so much turmoil. Agreed. Uh, agreed. There's a lot going on in this district. But the fact of the matter is, as of today, we do not have a middle school principal or a middle school vice principal. So actually, this might be the ideal time to make that move um, because then you're not going through a process of bringing people and saying, well, eventually. What does eventually mean? Does it eventually mean six months from now? Does it eventually mean a year from now? Um, there's a lot going on. This is not ideal time. Frankly, I'm ticked off that the previous school committee didn't take this issue up, didn't take the item off the table and vote it one way or another, because now it falls into this committee's lap to deal with this issue. And it could have been, quite frankly, voted down. And that would have been the end of it, and we would be looking at something else. 
That was not done. You need to, uh, not you, I don't, uh, in general, uh, I contacted the Mass Association of School Committee. I went on the DOE website. What is our role here? Our role here is clearly policy. It is clearly uh, removing uh, the thoughts of who are going to be in positions from the positions themselves. Mm -hmm. And that's the truth. And mm -hmm. part of that, part of our problem in this district, I also found in researching this issue, is we actually have no district hiring policy. There is no district hiring policy in Southbridge. It's not in, a, it's not in our policy manual. So again, I went and did a little research. I found other districts that have adopted hiring policies and how to answer some of these other questions that have been a problem for a long time in this district and continue to be a problem. So just as a, a, a point of information or as a point uh, uh, that I'd like to make is that our policy subcommittee needs to get on this real quick. Um, ultimately, the superintendent, his responsibility is to do the hiring and uh, deciding who is best for those positions. And I would hope that if this were to be voted, that that process would be uh, done with a lot of integrity, a lot of care, a lot of thoughtfulness, again, in the limited time that we have. We just had a process that unfolded at West Street School that went very well, that people gave a lot of good feedback on. It would be nice to see something like that. But separating who goes in those positions from the need for the position I do support um, one main administrator at that school. I would like the vice principals or assistant principal positions to be more clearly defined for that school. But ultimately, I think um, this is, unfortunately, the, the cards we've been dealt, and this is, uh, we need to vote on this and move forward. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Mr. McLaughlin. Is there any other discussion? I see no other discussion. Roll call vote, please. Mrs. Woodruff? Yes. Dr. Domenko? No. <clears throat> Mrs. Donovan? Yes. Mr. Lazo? No. Mrs. McLaughlin? Yes. Dr. O'Leary? No. Nope. Mrs. Principe? Yes. Four yes, three no. Motion passes. Thank you. I vote to assign. The superintendent, Mr. Ely, as a representative to serve on the Southern Worcester Connor Educational Collaborative. Do I have a motion? I have a motion by Mrs. Principe. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Mrs. Donovan. Any discussion? Mrs. Donovan. I'm sorry about my point of information, but could you just please tell me what the role of this representative is to serve on this particular co collaboration? The, co the Educational Collaborative serves mostly special ed students. Uh, from 16 or 17 different districts and the superintendent and I believe all of those districts serves on a board similar uh, similar to what you have here uh, and helps the executive director of the collaborative uh, make decisions so we actually pass policy uh, re regarding the collaborative how the collaborative operates okay. thank you any other discussion I see none roll call vote please Dr. Domenko? Yes. Mrs. Donovan? Yes. Mr. Lazo? Yes. Mrs. McLaughlin? Yes. Dr. O'Leary? No. Mrs. Principe? Yes. Mrs. Woodruff? Yes. Six yes, one no. Thank you. Motion passes. J, vote to approve the proposed school, sc school committee schedule dated July 19, 2012. Do I have a motion? So moved. Thank you. A motion from Mrs. Donovan, second by Mrs. Principe. Any discussion? Dr. Domingo? I don't understand the sentence, Madam Chair. Can you explain this vote to me, please? It's to approve the minutes for the rest of the year. You mm -hmm. have it in your the schedule. I think so. Schedule. It's right here. Well, the, the, well, sentence the D doesn't shouldn't be on there. Mean schedule. Anything. Schedule. Sorry, schedule. not D. There's an schedule. Extra date. date. Did July be a 19th. Meeting it's a schedule. Meeting schedule. Everybody received it in their packet, I believe. Yes. Thank you. You're welcome. Mrs. Principe? Um, Tuesday, August 21st, I'd like to amend this motion to remove that date from the school committee meeting, being one of them. Okay. Also, the last one, Tuesday, June 25th, I think that's always, is that? That's election that's day. That's another election is, yes. night. So you may want to move it to the Monday the 24th? Um, I 
suppose. Or remove the meeting. I, I would, pardon me? Well, it's the end of the fiscal year. You may need the meeting for some purpose, so. I would say then move it to the, move it to the day before, which would be the 24th. Now, do we want to ch change uh, the 20, well, we eliminate, um, my motion is to eliminate the 21st. We can put in the 14th, and that would be a scheduled school committee meeting, or if people prefer, just make it a committee meeting of the whole. But I would, personally, my, my amendment would be to put in the 14th versus, and take out the 21st. I'm okay Anyone? with that. Okay, so we have a motion for an amendment on the table to. Could, could you state the restate the amendment? You're just moving August second meeting to, to August fourteenth. I'm moving yes, the twenty okay. first to the fourteenth, mm -hmm. and June twenty fourth of twenty thirteen, because it's an election night, to the previous day, which would be the twenty fourth and a Monday. So we have a motion to amend the calendar to change the August 21st meeting to replace it to, the, to August 14th and to remove the June 25th meeting to June 24th. I don't think you have to vote that amendment. I mean, I think it hasn't been voted on yet, so it's not really an amendment because there's no motion. Right. Well, we're making changes, so we had the motion. So a motion to adopt the calendar with those two new dates? Yes. So it's a motion to adopt the new calendar with those change dates, the amendments to the dates. So we're eliminating August 21st and moving it to August 14th. And we're removing June 25th to June 24th. Correct? Mm -hmm. All right. Is there any more discussion on that? Roll call. Mrs. Donovan? Yes. Mr. Lazo? Yes. Mrs. McLaughlin? Yes. Dr. O'Leary? Yes. Mrs. Principe? Yes. Mrs. Woodruff? Yes. Dr. Domingo? Yes. Seven, yes. Yeah. Thank you. Motion passes. Agenda number 12, unfinished business. Is there any unfinished business that anyone has this evening? Anyone? Mr. Lazo. Um, I have just a question. Um, the ad hoc committees of the previous administration, have they just been all dissolved? Uh, the collaborative, the building, the reuse of the maintenance? What has happened to all that? I, was, I, I want to apologize, first of all for missing the reorganization meeting. I congratulate both of the, the newly elected members, and uh, I'm sure that uh, I'm kind of excited about the new energy and uh, the communication policies and stuff that you were talking about, I, I saw it on TV. I'm sure we'll learn a lot from each other. But uh, I was concerned about a couple of things. Point one, mm -hmm. the ad hoc committees. Um, where are they at at this point? The ad hoc committees, because it's, it's a new membership, we'll have to remember, we'll have to make new, new ad hoc committees as well as um, the subcommittees, which I did email and ask if anyone was interested in any subcommittee. I did get some responses. That will come up to vote okay. with the personnel at the next meeting. And, and one, one other question, which I, I, I'm very sorry I wasn't here, um, the negotiation vote that was taken. Um, I know we got an in-depth conversation here today about policy and finance. I think we're all in agreement it's policy and finance. Um, us giving up you know, salaries make up between 87% and 90% of our budget. And you gave up your duties as a school committee. So I thought that was kind of strange. Um, then I saw a presentation when I tried to watch the repeat of the meeting saying, well, we want the superintendent and the business manager and two school committee members. And it was kind of a model, I guess. I was trying to pick up the model. I want the people to know that um, 
Negotiations was with the superintendent, business manager, which was Courtney Keegan at the time, the school committee members as a subcommittee. So the reconfiguration is, what you're reconfiguring is going back to what we used to do. Um, and the attorney is usually there for the big units, which is usually the, the SEA. Um, all the other ones were usually done in, in, in three or four days. Then it was a discussion, which is just a point of clarification, that the negotiations, sub negotiations costed a lot of money. I think the point of clarification on that was that where the town paid money was more in the violation of the document during the year than the negotiations. The only time we ever had a negotiations uh, that costed us any money, which gave one more percent to the teacher's contract, which meant they got 2% and everybody in our district got 1%. That was the only time there was any uh, negotiation problem as far as who said, he said. You know, it was a misunderstanding. We thought it was this, they thought it was that. So the negotiation subcommittee has, has been paramount as far as no headaches during negotiations. I mean, there, 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 there were disagreements because you expect units to come in and ask for the sky and you're supposed to defend the taxpayer and the system for a fair wage. But I was hoping that somebody, after doing a little research, understood that maybe, you know, this is your uh, opportunity for a motion to reconsider from the prevailing side, um, to put this back in place. I mean, who? who becomes a negotiating subcommittee is not important. It's just that the negotiating subcommittee has been there for 50 years. And then all of a sudden, mm -hmm. it's gone. And you centralized again. This is what, you know, the oversight and accountability, and all of a sudden you centralize the power in the front office again. Everything's done under one little umbrella. It, it doesn't look very transparent. I mean, the subcommittee always reported to the main committee to finalize the vote. I don't understand where that didn't work, and um, I just wanted to bring that up on, on the unfinished business. I wasn't at the last meeting, I want to apologize for that, but I really think the school committee should reconsider that, and if you reconsider it, you have to do it at this meeting or it's finalized till next session. Thank you, Mr. Lazo. Just for a clarification, um, we are discussing that in executive session. Oh. Um, you know, because we cannot discuss strategies out here in the open. Not tonight. So Thank you. This is not strategy. Tonight. Yeah, it's not tonight. It's not strategy. We have an executive session. Yeah, we have okay. executive sessions. Madam Chairman, Thank you. Yes, this wasn't you. meant to be a strategy. No, no, no. This no, was understand. strictly process and procedure. Right, I understand Thank that, you. but I just wanted to let you know that that is in discussion in the executive session, okay. so we will be discussing. Mrs. Prince Bay? No, you just, you just said it. Okay. About a bargaining strategy. All right, anyone else with, yes, Mr. Madam Chairman, I'm having a problem. If, if I'm speaking about process and procedure, mm -hmm. Why are we going into executive? I think we might be violating the executive session law unless there's some piece to this that I'm not understanding. Because process and procedure is not supposed to be discussed in executive session. It's supposed to be discussed in open session. Mm -hmm. If we go into negotiations with a particular unit or mm -hmm. person, we have to go to executive session. But this meeting here is the last opportunity this year to reconsider just to reinstate the subcommittee. I mean, then after that, it was no, going to be your If someone wishes to reconsider, they may reconsider. What I'm, what I'm saying is you, you missed the meeting, so we changed what we were going to do as far as negotiation goes to a negotiation panel of some sort. That is a strategy we need to speak about in executive session is how we're going to do that. That's what we're doing this evening. Okay, I'm just But saying, if anybody wants to reconsider and... and well, before the record, it, I, I don't think putting a panel together is strategy. Putting a panel together is actually the process. Thank you. Anyone else this evening? New business. We're not at new business. We're still in unfinished business. Is there any more unfinished business? If there are no more for unfinished business, we're heading into new business. And new business, we were going to have the next school committee meeting on August 14th at 7 p.m. in the chambers. And also at this time, I want to recognize and welcome our two new members. We did not do that last meeting. I apologize for that. So I'd like to welcome and recognize Mrs. Donovan to the left and Mrs. McLaughlin to the right this evening as our new members and, and welcome to the team. Thank you. Thank you. Is there any other new business? Mrs. Domenico? Uh, Dr. Are, Domenico. Are, are we all out of money? Can we provide um, school committee members with a name? Name tags. They're Could making them. <laughs> they are making them. They will Thank be here you. eventually. Thank you. Thank you.
Mrs. McLaughlin. Yes, um, through you to the superintendent. Yes. I seem to recall at a prior school committee meeting there was talk of a, um, a new website coming on board. Is that still in process? Because just in reviewing it's, the It's still being worked on, yes. Okay. It, we're, still, we're still working on closing out, uh, getting the state reports done, uh, and, and rolling our students over to the new school year okay. and to the new buildings. Uh, and, and then the, the new uh, the, the website is actually going to be updated. Okay. Um, just because the, um, the new school building project, the last information on that building project is February 2011. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I, my recommendation is either to update it or remove it. Thank you. Anyone else in new business? Mrs. Donovan? Thank you. Um, I would just like to inform the public that there's something that's new and exciting that's starting in the community once again, and I just wanted to let people know that I fully support it. Um, we have some people in the community who are looking to start a booster club in town to support the athletics that will be taking part at our new middle school, high school. Um, and I think it's so important that parents get involved and community get involved to support our athletics up there and give our middle schoolers an opportunity to learn more about certain sports so that perhaps by the time they are on the high school side, they are ready to compete and we can have some, you know, um, be real competitive and have kids take pride and try to restore some pride into, into the um, into the athletics up there and I wanted to just let people know that our athletic director Brian Davis in conjunction with Michael Quato, um, Mr. Jovan who was our chairman for the school committee last year as well as citizen uh, Elizabeth Gendro will be holding a meeting next Monday which is July 3rd at 6 p.m. in the conference room. August. Oh I'm sorry August 3rd. No, July 30th. July 30th. Okay. Monday, July 30th, 6 p.m., Southbridge Police Department Conference Room. Thank you. Thank you. Any other further new business this evening? All right. Item, um, agenda item number 14, school committee reports. Um, right now, we don't have any committees. We will have those um, at the next meeting, and we'll vote upon the committees, um, except if Mr. Lazo has any updates on the new building. Well, the uh, building's on time, on the budget, it's crunch time. I know the uh, Tuesday, last Tuesday's meeting was, a, uh, was very interesting. Uh, it's, it's, uh, it's into the punch list. Um, we're supposed to be, uh, hopefully we're optimistic, not the 7th, but August 3rd to get the uh, completion date. Partial completion's gonna be on the 30th. So the dates are very close. And then after, they're gonna do a 30-day punch list. Uh, the punch list has already started. The painters are in there, various uh, things. Uh, the, the building, the lettering went up. Um, on the building, and uh, again, that nine-year-old child that said he wanted to say home of the pioneers on the front of the building is up. It looks absolutely impressive. Uh, just a little short um, story of Mr. Reno, a former administrator, happened to see me uh, in, in CVS and said, I wanted to see the school. We took him up there, and, um, and again, anybody that wants to see the school, we'll do small groups now, like groups of five on a Friday or something, uh, kind of convenient to everybody. But, we're, uh, we're full steam ahead um, as far as the construction portion and the, uh, the fields. Again, they're gonna, you know, we're not going to be able to use the fields when we first get up there, but uh, we knew that in the beginning. Uh, we pushed the schedule, because uh, Sigley did six months ahead. So uh, full steam ahead. Uh, I think we're doing fine. Thank you, Mr. Lazo. Agenda number 15, executive session. Vote to go into executive session to discuss strategy with respect to collective bargaining for union and non-union personnel or litigation to the extent that an open meeting may have a detrimental effect on the bargaining of litigation position of the governmental body pursuant to Chapter 30A, Section 21, Part 3. Do I have a motion? So moved. Thank you. I have a motion by Mrs. Principe. Do I have a second? I second the motion. Second by Mrs. McLaughlin. Roll call, please. Mr. Lazo? Yes. Mrs. McLaughlin? Yes. Dr. O'Leary? Yes. Mrs. Principe? Yes. Mrs. Woodruff? Yes. Mr. Domingo? Yes. Mrs. Donovan? Yes. Seven yes. Vote to conclude executive session and return to open session. Roll call? No. No. A motion, please? No. 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 You go into executive session and then just say you'll come back out of executive session to. To, uh, for just for the purposes of a German. Well, so no one 